NASA and the UK are to team up to protect Earth from damaging space weather. Sean Martin uh, expressed UK reports. Well, this has to do with, of course, the solar flares and the CMEs that come to Earth. It's about a matter of time, they say, before something strikes us as a character and event in the mid-1980s. The UK Space Agency is set to team up with NASA in a desperate bid to protect Earth from potentially devastating space weather. Space weather can be catastrophic for Earth technology because radiation from the sun can pummel our planet, causing, of course, atmosphere to expand, and this causes, uh, in effect, the satellites in orbit to uh, fry, in other words, to just burn out, potentially leading to a lack of GPS navigation, also mobile phone signal and uh, satellite TV uh, down an outage. Now, additional to the surge of particles can lead to high currents in the magnetosphere, which can lead to higher than normal electricity in the power lines, resulting in electronic transformers and power station blowouts and a loss of power, blackouts that is. While the solar storm like this is excessively exceedingly rare, they say, with at least one coming, the last one came in 1859, that was the Carrington event that we know of. A recent study from Harvard University says adverse space weather in a modern world so reliant on technology could cost a staggering about two trillion dollars. This is why the UK and the US are teaming up in a bid to battle space weather and protect Earth from what the government describes as a global concern. The UK Space Agency invested about ten million dollars through the European Space Agency ESA to help create, alongside University College London, a plasma analyzer, quote unquote, that will be placed in deep space and give early warning of imminent damaging space weather. Dr. Graham Turnock, CEO of UK Space Agency, says space weather has the potential to cause severe disruption to critical satellite and ground-based infrastructure. That's why it's essential that we take steps to mitigate this threat through improving our ability to forecast extreme solar activity. The space weather mission projects are uh, global influence by partnering with Europe and the USA, driving, protecting future UK knowledge and prosperity, keeping Britain safe and secure from potential impacts of space weather. Of course, this goes the same for the US. The UK and the European Space Agency plan to send two monitoring posts into space within the next five years to assist the solar orbiter, which will launch next year. Now, what's happening as far as space weather is concerned today? And I'll leave a link below for you for this, and so you can also um, refer to it whenever you like. Let's go to space weather. The solar wind is at 320.6 kilometers per second. Starlink versus astronomy, they say. Warning, if you love astronomy, this picture may upset you. It shows 25 Starlink satellites ruining a photo of the NGC 5354 Galaxy Group. Um, the long exposure was made by astronomers at the Lowell Observatory May 25th. That was two nights after the Starlink satellites were launched. And this week, the International Astronomical Union issued a statement raising scientific concerns about the effect constellations of satellites such as Starlink could have on astronomical research. In the meantime, a daytime meteor shower is underway. Most people don't know it, but some of the strongest meteor showers of the year happen when the sun is up. One of them is underway now. Canada's meteor orbit radar, CMOR, in western Ontario is pinging with activity on June 5th in response to a source only 20 degrees from the sun. These are the aerated meters. This is what Professor Brown University, Western Ontario says. We believe they come from sun grazing comet 96P Manholtz. When the shower peaks on June 7th, 
Brown expects his radar to detect one aritid every 20 seconds, a rate which the aritids among the top meteor showers of the year. These are aritoid meteors coming from sun grazing comet 96P. It's possible to see these meteors. The trick is knowing when to look. The best time, Brown advises, just before dawn. When the showers radiate, radiant is barely above the horizon, the sun is barely below. The aritids an observer would see before dawn are quite impressive as they are all earth grazers skimming the atmosphere almost horizontally overhead. And there's more to what these are. It turns out that June is the best month of the year for daytime meteor showers. When the aritids subside, another daytime shower will take over. The Zeta Persevis peak on June 13th, then another. The Beta Taurids on June 29th. The Beta Taurids are particularly interesting because researchers suspect it may be responsible for the Tunguska event of June 30th, 1908, when a meteoroid leveled a forest in Russia. This June, the Taurids debris swarm will make its closest approach to Earth since 1975. Many astronomers, including Brown, will use large telescopes to search for signs of hazardous objects as the swarm passes by. A few days ago, we had a warning concerning a solar storm battering Earth. And uh, this was from Sean Martin and Express UK. The experts claimed that the stream of high-speed solar winds were battering Earth. Consequences could have been severe. The hole opened up in the sun's atmosphere, releasing particles into deep space. Holes like this are common. And researchers say we are now in the midst of an outpouring of solar particles which will affect the Earth, uh, which would have affected the Earth a few days ago. And this could range from stunning auroras to a hindrance in technology. Cosmic forecast site Space Weather, I'll leave a link for, below for you for this, said a stream of high solar wind is buffeting Earth's magnetic field, setting the stage for geomagnetic unrest around the poles. The gaseous material flowing from a hole in the sun's atmosphere, solar wind effects are expected to continue the next 24 to 48 hours as the Earth is hit by particles or auroras could happen in the next coming days. They include the northern lights, aurora borealis, and the southern lights, aurora australis, are caused when solar particles hit the atmosphere. As the magnetosphere gets bombarded by solar winds, stunning blue lights can appear as that layer of the atmosphere deflects the particles. But researchers also note that the consequences of a solar storm can be far more severe than, uh, far more severe than northern or southern lights. For most part, the Earth's magnetic field protects humans from the barrage of radiation, which comes from sunspots, but solar storms can affect satellite-based technology as well. They can heat the Earth's outer atmosphere, causing it to expand, and this can affect satellites in orbit, potentially leading to a lack of GPS, mobile signals, etc. Also, a surge of particles can lead to high currents in the magnetosphere, which can lead to higher than normal electricity and power lines, resulting in electrical transformers and power station blowouts and a loss of power. The higher amounts of radiation also leave people, of course, vulnerable to cancer. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue 
my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.